Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Rinks and Great Park Guys podcast. I'm your host and member of the Rinks and Great Park Guys marketing team, DJ. Uh, we have a special Black History Month episode for you. We have two interviews. Uh, our first interview is a reoccurring guest. Uh, he's a former Anaheim Duck and NHL player, current coach and owner of the Long Beach Shredders, uh, Emerson Needham. And our second guest is a uh, U.S. figure skater, Star Andrews. We're very fortunate to have both of them on to give their insights, share some stories and some perspectives uh, on diversity in both of their sports with hockey and figure skating. Um, and without further ado, let's get to the interviews. First up, we have Emerson Needham. And uh, welcome back to another episode of the Rinks and Great Park Guys podcast. Uh, we have our first reoccurring guest, uh, Emerson Needham, joining us at uh, Lakewood with his Long Beach Shredders uh, backdrop. I love it. I love it. Uh, how's it going? Good. No, it's uh, same thing, different day. Just, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, got the music blocks in the background, you know, figure skaters on the ice when we're not practicing. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like clockwork, really. So, no, it's just a, it's just a fun atmosphere. You know, there's so many other jobs that I could be doing that I, you know, be having less fun, half the fun uh, that I am now. And that's, that's the main point. Just gotta, gotta love what you do. And I certainly love just being at the rink, no matter what's going on on the, on the ice, whether I'm on it or I'm off it. I, um, you know, you know, me and you DJ talked about, you know, star, uh, before, you know, getting on here and just, you know, even the figure skaters, just, you know, seeing them when I'm, leaving the locker room and, and them pulling quads or whatever they're doing, yeah. you know, these days, just, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, skill and development, no matter, you know, across the board, whatever you're doing, figure skating, speed skate, and, you know, uh, stick time, other coaches yeah. teach, you know, the, the next generation. I mean, it's just, it's nonstop, you know, entertainment. Uh, so I, I love it. Yeah. And it's good to, like you're saying, just that, that we have something going on all the time. Like, Ice time's always booked, and yeah. I mean, props to the figure skaters because they're there early and throughout the day, and uh, it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. Um, I want to start. I, I wanted to bring it up last time, uh, but I didn't get a chance to. So when I first started playing, I started playing in like uh, like early twenties, uh -huh. um, and it was like around the same time uh, that you got drafted, uh -huh. uh, and it was like a pickup that I go to, and my nickname was Edom uh, uh -huh. at pickup. <laughs> so. Uh, and I mean, I, I brought that up to some people and they like, I kind of like took offense to it for me, but at the same time, I was just like similar complexion, um, your, you know, first round draft pick, fast skater skill. So I was just like, Hey, if I'm being compared yeah. to this guy, like that's, that's a, that's a step up for me. So, uh, I just thought that was funny and wanted to bring that up. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I, I, I was speaking to a, uh, a player who's now signed with us. Uh, we, we just, uh, got, you know, um, Caleb Cordes is his name is, he's out of Newport beach and okay. late signing, just deadline signing. And, you know, you just, you know, me and my brother, my brother chose, you know, number 65 cause you know, you were, and then I followed suit. So it's kind of interesting, just even, you know, not, not that it happened all the time or, you know, whatever, but there's small occurrences of, there's a, a, a gentleman in medicine hat who, you know, named his son Emerson and, you know. Uh, during my major junior days there in Best and Hat, it's just, you know, once again, you know, small, small occurrences of, of you know, kind of similar stuff like that happening. That's, you know, it's it's not a lot. It's not like Timu or, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe this, you know, some of the the glory that obviously the the greats get or, you know, gets laughing all those guys, but, you know, you know, come across some stories uh, similar to yours that, uh, you know, gives me a, a little bit of uh, joy. So, yeah, for sure. no, that's cool. Yeah. It make an, make an impact in, in little ways yeah. and, um become a little like fan favorites um and then speaking of that just uh growing up i mean obviously we like the diversity uh in hockey it's getting better like yeah. there's more and more uh i guess color in the sport um is there anyone that you looked up to uh growing up as far as like similar complexion or i mean i guess both um but someone that like you know you kind of see it and uh, to be it type of thing yeah, you know, obviously everyone, I think, you know, early 2000s, uh, you know, Jerome McGinley, right? It was just yeah. kind of premier uh, black hockey player. And, uh, you know, he was certainly a guy that I looked up to. I, you know, I wish I modeled my game weirdly. And this is for, you know, the younger generation, you know, listening out there. It's like he was the guy that you should have modeled your game after. And I, I didn't. 
Um, I always looked up to him, you know, from a leadership standpoint, yeah. you know, when you're so young, you just, I don't know, you, you know, you don't know any better. So you're looking at guys for whatever, the flash, the skills. Yeah. So I was always a Pavel Bure guy just because he was, you know, the fastest guy on the ice and all that. Um, but you know, if I could go back in time and, you know, tell myself like, Hey, you know, this is, you know, mo no model, not only from a leadership perspective, but just overall game perspective is Joe McGinley. Um, you know, what you do without the puck, uh, you know, just that North South gritty, strong, uh, finishing checks. You know, I, I tell my, you know, players and, and player, you know, coaches at the, the highest levels of hockey will, will say the same thing. It's just, you know, you got to have a backup game. You got to, yeah. you know, not scoring. If you're not, you know, doing this, that, you know, what, what are you doing? And, uh, I mean, you know, you know, look no further than Jerome McGinley to, you know, for once again, simple North South, uh, you know, had everything shot the, you know, the, the term determination, passion for the, I mean, he just, he had it all. And so once again, bottom line in the story, I, I wish I could go back and, uh, you know, maybe not model my game after, you know, in, 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 you know, Burry was obviously in you know, a hall of famer, yeah. great own right. Um, but, uh, you know, I think you can make the argument that if again, I had, you know, more talent around him uh, for, you know, consistently over the year. I mean, he would have for sure got it done as far as winning Stanley Cup there in yeah. Calgary. Um, and, and so anyway, long story short, if, you know, you know, Jerome McGinley was, was the guy that I should have been looking up to and, and, you know, looking back on it now, just being older and being a coach now, it's just, you know, it, I mean, he's the, he's the guy. So. Yeah. But he, yeah. I mean, it's, that's a good point of just having like uh, more, more tools in your bag. Uh, yeah. when some of the stuff's not working, just being able to make an impact on the ice because it's not always on the stat sheet. Um, but yeah, and then again, when I first started playing, those were the curves yeah. I would get. So that was like, my I always found a connection like some yeah. way. Um, and I liked the curve. It was a little bit more more flat, square toe, uh, yeah. at least for like the Eastern one. So like the again, the curve is what I uh, went to uh, when I first started playing. Yeah, like I I you know, was always referring back to, and Burry had a curve there with Bauer, but, you know, the sack, curve, yeah. you know, it was just like you know, typical mid curve on the, the East, you know, the sack. And so Lidstrom, I, I'm always Madonna. Like I always went by kind of the previous generation from the current one that I was in. And now that you met, you know, the, again, now it's on the McDavid and you know yeah. all this stuff. But, uh, it's just kind of funny that it seems to be the, the, the generation prior that you, you're always familiar with so yeah exactly you know, the stick store and i just still just have these vivid and then sure enough you still see the sherwood with the coffee or yeah know. yeah exactly exactly so um and moving yeah ex we're, we can move on to like experiences and stuff uh growing up because i mean you've played through uh like multiple levels yeah. um and just maybe any experiences you had as far as like i don't know if anyone's discriminated against uh, discriminated against you or like if there's any incidents like big or small that you could could touch on that or just like stick out to you uh yeah, people may not I know only had in you know there might have been some indirect occurrences that either were so small that i can't remember or you know they're not as important or you know whatever the case may be but I was at the national development program and you know sure enough we're we're on a team better than all the players we were playing against of course and uh, I was in the NHL. We're in, uh, God, it was a Northern Mesh. should remember it just because of the occurrence, but it was a Northern Michigan team. Um, and anyway, I was, you know, called inward and, uh, you know, just stoppage of play. It was in the offensive zone and, you know, just, you know, turn around and said it to me. And I, you know, I, I didn't even, I was just froze, you know, I just like, like it just a random you know right off the bat just you know just blurred like there was no confrontation you know prior to that he just said just like god he just you know shit. so anyway I, I don't even think i called my or told my coach there going back to the bench i finished up the game and that was during the second half of the year guys were starting to get called up to the u18 team i was i only played one year in the u17 team and um you know i was playing lights out and all this stuff and I, you know the only person i told was uh, my agent, Eustace King, who's a black, yeah, you know, now, now super agent uh, in the sport, represents TJ Oshi and uh, you know, Jason Zucker and, and Jared Spurgeon. The list goes on and on. But 
uh, you know, I called him and he was thankfully good buddies with the coach at the time who, I mean, had that maybe not been the connection, I don't think we would have went anywhere. But even as I'm talking to you, like I, I didn't even make that connection of, okay, agent to coach uh, of, of the other team, the coach of the other team uh, to the player. I don't know if that's significant of, uh, you know, a relationship, what, uh, you know, I, I, and, and as I'm, you know, telling you this, I'm, I'm thinking back, it's like, God, you know, agent, good buddies with the coach, you know, telling, no, this happened. He's not, he's, you know, a straightforward young man and all this stuff and yeah. probably reinstilled the fact that no, this kid said it, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. from the respect level from the coach to, you know, where even my agent was at the time, uh, used this and that respect. He was like, no, this, you know, this kid want to make it up. The agent is a credible guy, yeah. you know, all the layers of it, you know, and I haven't, this is the first time I've actually thought about it. Just talking to you, um, you know, you know, how much is pushed back from a guy who doesn't have a connection to an agent yeah. uh, that, you know, can't really come down hard on the player. Cause it's just, it was just a player to player thing it's not yeah. like i mean we're in the corner everyone else is probably changing shifts at the tire you know get leaving the ice uh and he said it just dead in the corner uh, mono mono you know person to person um you know when no one's there it's one thing if the whole bench here is or the whole ice here you know whatever the case may be but it's not like there was any witnesses so you know not until i'm telling this now that i really you know connect, connect the dots but and you look at so many instances that, you know, that's not the case. And, you know, they just say it where there's no, you know, uh, repercussion or, or, you know, connections where the, the player in particular, uh, the instigator can be held accountable. But it's kind of interesting. I just, and that, I guess, with all that, I was, I was lucky to the point where, you know, uh, the, the player uh, uh, that, you know, said those words to me was, uh, you know, told by my coach i told my agent right after the game this is what happened he told his coach or you know my agent called the coach right away uh you know luckily he picked up you know the player came crying to me after the game this is you know a, a probably a legal adult you know, i don't know if he was eight, he was probably 18 19 you know, legal adult here crying in, in tears in small town michigan after a game probably one you know just bawling yeah. his eyes out um and saying hey you know that was wrong and this you know so anyway, there, there was one occurrence uh, that really sticks out, and, and that was that. So, yeah, I mean that, and that's tough. And just hearing like his reaction to it too, I think some of it, it's like almost like it's like low hanging fruit to just it's like a low blow to instantly just go to that and try and get a stir out of someone, yeah, and then not knowing like how that would be felt to be yeah. called a you know derogatory term, yeah. um, like. And it's good, like like you said, there's some people that don't have that like direct connection to be able to tell someone to tell that coach to reiterate to you know the player like that's that's not cool. Um, but yeah, that there's and then like you know how many times is that happening throughout the league where you said it's in the corner, no one else heard it but you, and it's based on an, on credibility. I mean, personally, I haven't had luckily I haven't had anyone call me uh, like the n word on the rink or anything like that. I have been told and this was just like beer league inline um not even a big uh, <laughs> like bronze like not even big and yeah. some guy uh telling me like i should stick to playing basketball and i was just like but same same thing as like it happens and you're just like yeah like where did that cut like that's unnecessary where did it come from it, uh type it, of thing it, it, and this is me this is the adult space you know i'm a, a dad now yeah leader in the community you know know my role and and everything that comes with it and i just like you know and i was young and i just actually had a, a conversation with one of the the other skill coaches uh right for a private you know hit the ice for a private lesson like, kind of you know saying the same thing but you know and i'm a i'm just more of a rational but you know you get to a certain age and you just you you maybe were one you had one view or one perspective there for the previous 10 years yeah. and just coming out you know your adolescent years and all this stuff you know but you know i was a a, a big rap guy and all this stuff and and what, once again i appreciate anything you know anything you can make you know something small big and you know, make a successful career pay tax you know whatever yeah like, all for it um you know but i i just you know i i listen to rap music and i just i i do feel that there needs to be a hard line on on just the word in general just just 
to just say, you know, this isn't okay, no matter what color you are. And, you know, it is in the past and, you know, we are, yeah. over, you know, and so, you know, just speaking in terms of either the younger generation or, you know, I just don't, I, I, I don't want the, the, uh, you know, one generation or, or one sector to think that we're all on board with maybe, you know, rap music, you know, splurring the, the word left and right yeah. and, and certain demographics, you know, black community or whatever, being okay with that. Um, because, you know, maybe I was, or, you know, I had a different perspective on it, but now it's just like, you know, just for the sheer sake of people understanding yeah. uh, the significance and the history uh, regarding the word, like, I just, I think it should be, you know, straight across a broad brush like no like i mean we need to re you know move past it you know you know accept that it is a bad term and you know everyone whether you're black white you know whatever you know stop using the term because i just um i don't like it i don't like the historic factor of it yeah and i think there just needs to be a hard line that says you know that is not okay because you know certainly people can make the argument that you know look this is oh it's playing around me like it was right and it's like yeah that's not okay but you know, at the same time, let's all move on from it, right? So uh, that's my perspective. That's my adultness, my leadership, uh, you know, coming into play to say, you know what, like, you know, there's way, there's millions of words out there that we could be using that can, you know, bring out a certain point or whatever, that yeah. that, you know, be like that. So I, I, I did want to make that point across as well. Yeah. And then that's just, a, yeah, one of those things where it's like, eventually culturally, like, start to move uh yeah away from certain things but yeah yeah there's there's so many yeah. factors uh yeah. on the broad scale of things too um and then i guess keeping on the, the same thing um like at least for myself uh like i grew up in hankton beach um so most of the time i was like the only black kid like yeah. very like it's very sparse yeah um you know i'm from huntington beach or i speak like i'm from huntington beach uh say dude yeah. bro all that kind of stuff uh and like what i like would fall into is just like you know i to like i would necessarily i'd be like black to you know my white friends but then if yeah. i like my black friends yeah i was white so it's like kind of like an in-between um and then even dealing with like i played football and i was playing football uh, in college and we had a club hockey team that i got to join so i got to play a little like uh club puck i guess and one of my teammates was like, DJ, and he was black. He's like, DJ, you know, black people don't play hockey. And I was like, in my head, I was just like, I, I don't know how to tell this to you, but like, I play hockey. Like I go and put on all the stuff and play yeah. like in a cool factor too. Like some guys came out to games and he started to come out to games, came out to some ducks games. So like became more of a fan of the sport. And I think turned a little bit uh, in that regard, but have you had any experiences with that where it's just like, I and I, I don't know if reverse racism is the the the, the yeah. term or if that's classified as that. And, you know, I've heard reverse racism, you know, whether that falls in, I'm, I'm not sure. But I do want to get to a point where people are viewed as, you know, just good for being good. Right. Like, yeah. I just, you know, and I, you know, I think back of uh, first it was, um, you know, Seth Jones and, you know, he's the, you know, uh, the, the highest drafted, you know, black player, which is so fantastic. You know, it, 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 it's so tough, right? And and this is this is for just the listeners out there. It's like it's so tough because it is a significance in a sense that black people were not either allowed to play or whatever. And people say, Oh, well, that was 200 years. No, this was like you know 50, 60 years ago. This wasn't yeah. 200 or 400. And this is you know, you know, for the you know, uh, better parts of you know, if you're speaking of the the I'd say 1600, I mean, it's uh you know pretty relevant I, uh so so when people say oh that was back then well you know it depends on you know 20 30 you know so long story short um you know there is a significance to any first of anything we we talked about the first this the first that like yeah well, i get it but you know i'm just i'm saying i guess i am looking forward to the point where we can just um you know, accept people for their accomplishments and, and not getting race into it. And I think that that will come when we do get past, you know, and, and yeah. do make things fair, do make things equal, and, you know, just from everything I can get into a redlining and, and all this stuff that's yeah. not related. And um, so, so long story short, like, you know, and it's kind of like the, 
uh, me and how I view rap music, me being older versus me being young. It's just, you know, my perspective is, is, and, and I'm speaking in terms of myself as a player, it was a lot of the times it was, hey, you're the, the first this because of that, you know, because of the color of your skin where, you know, after a while, and maybe not in the moment, but, you know, looking back on it, it's just like, God, you know, how many times was I viewed as the first this or you're a player of this? And rightfully so, like you want to you want to make an impact. You want to do this, but you also, yeah. want, you know, for your skill and for for just the movement and just life in general, you you do want to just be, you know, looked at as a high end player, not the first yeah. you know, this or the. So um it just kind of ties in your story with uh you know what what you, your black friend said uh, to you as a kid it's just like um it goes both ways it's all kind of mixed you know when we get over something i don't know uh, yeah. but um you know for quentin byfield like i i do want him to just be viewed as just a good player yeah <laughs> like um you know when i watch him he's just you know he's lights out in, in many different areas um and i don't you know long story short i, I just i Bottom line, I hope to get to a day where, you know, um, everything is 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 equal and, and, and made for, you know, uh, equal opportunity and all this stuff. So, you know, everyone can stop making these, you know, excuses or whatever. White, black, you know, can say just this is it is what yeah. it is. And, and, and so that's just kind of my point. And long story short, it's just, you know, I think we're all we all want the same goal. It's just weaving, you know, how we go about it, I guess, is 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 the hardest part but uh yeah I, I think we all want the same thing is that's just uh we're all playing hockey you know we're you know multiple it's a melting pot out there no one's yeah. anything different and, and it's just we're playing the game we love right so um you know i think we're all looking for that point you know we even that is is a different story so um i'll leave it at that but yeah i mean and i think that's a good i was gonna say i looked up uh today just like a list of uh, like black hockey players, um, they have made it through it, uh, and the NHL and like, it's a pretty lengthy list. Like there's a good amount and it's for sure getting, uh, we'll say top heavy, I guess, if we're going like the current, um, where you're having more and more, you get your Quentin Byfields that are, I think your second overall, so highest pick. Um, and I think eventually like we will get to that point to where we are. I always look at it as like a spectrum of like, you know, the younger generation needs to get inspired, start playing and then get old enough to be like the new generations look to where it's like, it'll slowly start uh, kind of like you're saying, like melting together where like, that's not a thing anymore because it's just going to be so diverse that it, you like bringing it up is just going to be pointless. Um, Cause you see with like, and, 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 and sorry to cut you off. I mean, to that point, you look at soccer, right? You look at, uh, you know, Balotelli and, you know, you know, just a black guy being in Italian soccer. And it's just like, you know, he's, you know, he's still at the most you know diverse sport in the world, just from a worldwide perspective. You you look at Team France, you know, you look at all the and yeah. you know you hear you still hear these instances of racism and you know the crowd ch- chanting something and yeah. so on, you know one of these countries um, that's just so baffling, right? So it's just regardless worldwide, you know uh, how much of a melting pot it is, how diverse it is. You just hope you know people just kind of get over their you know self whatever. Uh, yeah selfishness or you know whatever the word you want to uh, term and just we can go out and just play together have fun together score goals together and uh you know succeed together so yeah at the end of the day it's just about having fun and getting out there and you know yeah my personal views hockey is i think the greatest sport yeah on earth so it's just like you know when i'm out there playing with uh with my like guys just in beer league it's not you know me and them it's just like us oh, yeah. playing together and the only color that matters is uh, the color of our jersey, yeah. and then uh, just not liking the 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 opposite color jerseys. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess we can go into that. Just I know like the like league initiatives are uh, big, just in diversity across the board, um, whether it's like the LGBTQ, um, black girls hockey. Uh, just getting making sure that for the sport in general, like everyone knows that it's accepting uh and that we want people to come and play the sport regardless of what they look like or uh who they are so yeah i just i don't even have the energy dj like i just you know i i it's not even a matter of fact of if it's right or wrong being gay trans like my point is like how does it affect 
you. Yeah. You, know, you see two freaking dudes making out in public. How does that affect you? You see two girls in public making out. How does that affect you? I, I just, I don't even have the energy or time to, to judge. Like I, yeah. I, there was maybe a time not even related in that subject to the point where, you know, maybe I didn't like him or I didn't like her because of this, but you know, as you get older, you just, you, you just learn to, it's like, God, I got, I got all the baggage in the world. Yeah. Man. I got all the problems in the world that like, God, I, I, I mess up on this. I mess up on that. I'm like, who am I to judge you on your own personal, you know, stuff, whether it's genetic brain fun, you know, twit, like I just, I, I, so bottom line, and I see, you know, just older, maybe just stuck in their own times or whatever, judge someone that's, uh, you know, something's coming out about, you know, um, the uh, whatever, gay, lesbian, black, white. I'm just like, man, I don't even, I, I got so much going on. Um, I wouldn't judge for the bottom line of me accepting my own flaws and saying, hey, yeah. I, I got my own ass I need to work on. <laughs> yeah. That, I don't even I, like it doesn't even come close. like I, I've accepted that like and I've I've understood that I make this 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 and this mistake um I have no reason to judge you for whatever it is I just I think and you know online and social media has, has this presence and you know it's like how many times you see someone comment on you you know trying to big dog you or put you down that's like has, has a private account I mean yeah you know that they're just you know you can't even respond to the guy and it's just like it's crazy. Um, yeah. So, you know, it just goes back to my, my previous point. I just hope we get to the point where people just start realizing, just like, like, just look yourself, you know, try to make you better or work on what you need to work on before you judge anyone else. And, you know, but I see all these, you know, political stuff, you know, judging being it's both left, right, and just, you know, attacking one another. I'm just like, man, like we all got baggage. We all need to work on, you know, so, you know, one thing or the other with ourselves, and just that's end of story with me. So, um, I've always been a supporter with the, uh, LGBTQ, uh, plus community. Like I just, you know, my thing is a, it doesn't affect me. Um, you know, this is, this is America. This is, you know, this, yeah. you know, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all free. And, and, and so that, that's that I, I, um, and, and that's the bottom line. Like, I, I just don't even think twice. I just, you, you believe in this. I don't care if you think you're an alien, you know, it doesn't affect me. So, yeah. um, and that's how I live. Um, you know, and it's just stress free. I mean, you know, how much time guys or girls spend on, you know, just making something so small into a big thing or a big political argument or, or something. It's just like, once again, it just goes back to, if we all just, no matter what you are, just play the game, just, have fun, laugh. Um, you know, I just think it's just a better place. So, um, yeah, that's that. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. That's a very good point to have of kind of just, you know, if we all focus our energy on making ourselves better and yeah, at the end of the day, like that doesn't affect, affect you. And you're just taking up, you're taking up uh, space in your own brain, worrying about somebody <laughs> else's stuff. Uh, like, yeah, I, I feel the same where it's just like, some stuff I feel like it starts to stress me out around. She's like, I don't have the yeah the time or the the energy to expend on something else. I got um, a, I got a pod, I got a podcast with DJ Harris coming. <laughs> Think of the same thing. I got a I got a podcast with Emerson Eatham. I got a I got a I got to dial it in over here. I can't can't be worrying about what some guy's saying on Twitter that exactly. isn't even gonna care what I'm feeling at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good place to. To cap it off, I appreciate you coming on and everything, um, taking the time out of your day. Uh, and yeah, good luck to you uh, and the Shredders. Uh, yes, finish, finishing off the season, like, yeah, yeah sure. and just to uh, touch on the give a, myself a little plug here. We uh, we started off, you know, pretty good. I mean, you know, we were for a first year club, we you know, we started off in, in, in when I say start off, probably the first half of the year, we were two games below 500. You know, for the most, I mean, it just seems like consistently we're, we're just, you know, two games uh, below 500. We couldn't crawl up to that 500 or, or, or above mark. And, you know, we lost our, our best player, you know, or at least our top offensive guy, uh, Blake Anderson. He, he got suspended uh, uh, five games, but it took him like two months. And, um, you know, it was, it was a big loss. He, he went back up to Canada and he just couldn't afford that that time, that big time span off of Christmas break and, and a couple yeah. of things. And, 
Uh, we have an unfortunate uh, situation with the, regarding our D man. So just two two players, and that's what it is. It's it's one player, two player. You know, a line holding this, holding the fort, whether it's offensive, defensively, and and just like that. So uh, this last stretch has been difficult. Uh, we're just trying to finish off the the season strong, right? Currently, right now, we're we're last in the division. But you know, for me, it's it's a learning experience. You know, yeah. it's it's tier three. There's with, from people who are maybe a little bit unfamiliar with with pay to play hockey. There's so many dynamics with. Uh, you know, uh, managing the budget, you know, uh, the, the play to play system, you know, how you recruit, uh, you know, you, at the end of the day, it is a business. You're not solely like a tier two um, USHL team where you're relying straight on just talent. You know, you're recruiting for talent. You're recruiting for this, that, you know, these players are playing and, and you got to just, you know, manage that. And, and then so many other different things. And um, so for me, it's definitely been a learning uh, experience. Um, hey, win, lose, draw, you know, I, I'm here to, to to help get me better. And at the end of the day, as a coach, no matter where you're at, you're going to have tough seasons, good seasons. Uh, it, it's how you come out of it that that makes you better or or what you can can learn from it. And that's where I'm at right now. You know, we got to you know grind out this last season. Uh, I made a couple of big trades there. Uh, some of our top scorers, I, I moved them on to a, a situation where they can, you know, uh, you know, uh, provide a, a, a lengthy uh, you know, a couple 20 year olds that you know, uh, will have deep playoff runs but long story short like you know for me it's all learning experience I had a big success uh, uh, last season in my in my first year of coaching uh, hit a speed bump here but you know what for me it's it's life you know the life throws stuff at you no matter if you're an accountant <laughs> you're a, you know any salesperson you know uh, you know life throws stuff in. it's how you make it out of it you know yeah. certainly learn from this season and, and be better, but people love us. You know, people love the brand. People love, uh, you know, the creative and the dynamic we're getting. I, I just, uh, I got the phone uh, earlier uh, this morning from, uh, um, he runs the NFL alumni uh, social media and, and and he just loves our brand, loves what we're doing. And regardless, win or lose, we're, we're making an impact right now as from a coach, no matter if you win or lose, you're, you're, you're making these an impact in these players' lives. And, and that's what I coach. So um, that's that. Uh, follow us on uh, on all uh, social major social media platforms. Uh, it's at Shredders USPHL. That's at S H R E D D E R S U S P H L. Once again, that's on all platforms. So I appreciate the support, uh, DJ. Thanks for having me. I'll I'll do this anytime. It's like I can go on on for hours here. So appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, I'll make sure to to have links uh, to your guys' social and the website and everything like that. Uh, for you guys, beautiful. Um, that was fantastic. That was lights out, crazy. Yeah, yeah it was fun. Uh, fun to be out. I was gonna say, like, just to reiterate, like what I've said before. Like, the brand is for sure fun. So, like, what people are saying is is spot on. The guys. I mean, I'm out there. Um, I don't get to be around because uh, I'm usually doing like the learn to plays and stuff like that. So it's like people starting out. So like, the energy of being around like the boys type of thing of playing the game and you know meaningful hockey. It's it's fun to be around them and they're, they're having a good time and yeah. love to, to be on the camera. So you uh, doing great. appreciate yeah. it all. No okay. problem. Welcome back. And uh, thanks again to Emerson for, for coming on and sharing some stories, giving his insight and perspective uh, on diversity in the sport and taking time out of his busy schedule to uh, come on the podcast. And uh, last but not least, let's head over to our interview with star Andrews. And uh, we have a very special guest uh, coming to the podcast today. Uh, we have Star Andrews, who skates for LA Elite uh, out of Lakewood Ice. Um, happy to have you. How's it going? I'm doing good. I actually just got back from the rink. So, you know, just, just chilling in my bed now. Feeling or warming up because I know Lakewood uh, gets pretty cold. Yes, Lakewood is freezing, but it's been really nice out. So that's that's really nice. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of summer weather uh, in February. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, and it's very nice to be able to have uh, someone of like your notoriety, um, yeah. I guess, so close to us. Uh, I, over the past, I guess, couple of years, have gotten more and more in tune with figure skating. Um, I play hockey, so it wasn't, it's not like my first thing, but having uh, close proximity to seeing you skate, um, seeing the other skaters at Great Park, and just getting a up close and personal look at how talented uh, and skilled y'all are is uh, it. Brings a new appreciation for me where I'm, you know, cheering for people during the Olympics and watching all the other, you know, Skate America and uh, nationals and stuff and um, have a true appreciation for it because 
I'm not trying to do any jumps or anything or trying to keep my skates on the ice. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So I want to start off. Um, so I think the video is like 11 years old now. Um, but with my hair uh, has 57 million views. I think last I checked, I don't know the, the small numbers, but um, I guess go into that and explain. I mean, you, you, that came out when you're a little bit younger, but when did it start to take off as far as? Uh, so I was nine when I created that program. And, you know, I never thought that it would get to like where it is. And now it's still kind of crazy looking back at it and seeing how many people have actually watched it. Because, you know, I, I choreographed that program in, in my living room with my mom and my aunt. So, you know, it was just really for fun. You know, I was yeah. doing in recitals and, you know, my mom was like, okay, let's put it on YouTube, you know, because you're so cute and yeah. you're, this program is awesome. So she did that. And it just like, it took off. And of course, I didn't know what the word viral meant. Yeah. And so my aunt called and she was like, oh my gosh, your video is going viral. And I was like, cool. I don't really know what that means, but cool. And then my mom was like, star, this many people have seen it. And I'm like, no mm -hmm. way. And it was just, it was just all kind of crazy, especially because, you know, I was just like a normal kid skating to a song that I liked even like because lyrics weren't allowed in competition uh -huh. when I was nine so you know I did it just for fun and it ended up getting really big and it's kind of awesome now looking back on it this little fearless girl just skating with my hair just whipping her hair around yeah I watched it yesterday and, and saw the whole thing I like the 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 flair that you have and then yeah. uh, all that stuff that uh, super fun um did Willow ever uh see I feel like um, I I feel like she's seen it. I mean, it 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 at that you know point in the the song was very popular, and you know Will Smith is already very well known. So yeah. you know, I was just like, this song is awesome, and and, and you know, I don't really think anybody will skate to it because lyrics aren't allowed in competition. So why don't I just do it for a recital and have yeah. fun with it? And you know, I mean, it'd be awesome if she saw it. I'm I'm not sure if she thought but it'd be really cool if she did yeah she could easily be one of the 57 million people to see it i mean i feel like that's got to to maybe draw her attention um yeah. and i guess going to that you're nine uh, at that point you were still i think just having fun with the sport um how did you like fall in love and then get to the point to where you're like uh doing it competitively and like professionally well i guess i just Honestly, I just kept going and I just kept trying the harder jumps and it I've always had a lot of fun with it. And I've kind of always took it seriously since a younger age in competitions and stuff because I'm a I'm a competitive person. So even in school, you know, we would have um, it was something with PE where we would do push ups and see how many push ups you can do. And I was always really competitive in that that sense. So, you know, skating, I also took very and that competitive sometimes a little bit too seriously um and as I've gotten older I've learned to um loosen up a little bit on the serious part and have you know more fun but yeah you know when I was nine I you know that was for fun but of course you know I had my competitive programs and you know I practiced those and I just kept trying the harder jumps and from then everything just got better and better and then I am where I am now just from being fearless and trying all this stuff and that's good and that like I, I can understand of like always being competitive and then learning how to like harness that competitiveness uh into moments that it's required and then being able to relax I see uh like your TikToks and your videos where you're just having fun on the ice yeah. uh, um I do the social media for the rinks in Great Park so oh, I'm cool. the one like interacting into um stuff came out to get photos of you uh like pre- like right America. before skate america yeah yeah um so yeah and that like those are the the cool things for me um because yeah it's pretty cool um especially like seeing you at the rink and then like watching it on tv like seeing the commercials it's like wow this is like it's really this, cool yeah it's so crazy this is so cool um it's hard for me to like because i did a commercial with guaranteed rate and to yeah. you know actually see it you know because you know, I'm behind the scenes, you know, skating with the lights and all of that. And to actually see it all come together is so surreal. It's really cool. And to see it on TV, it's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's me. Like, yeah. 
that. And it's just, it's really cool. It's really cool to see. Yeah, I feel I feel very spoiled because there's like so many high performance skaters like at our rinks that and then see the commercials just like I just saw you at the rink and I see the commercial like it's so crazy. Yeah. Um and then I used to act a little bit when I was younger. So like I I was only in like I was like a background person in like a brass commercial. Um so not quite the same. I mean you're still there seeing everything happen. Yeah. So I, I know a little bit of like seeing yourself on TV and you're just like, I don't even know how to yeah. process that. Like, yeah. Me. yeah. And you know, you're so used to watching like TV shows and never seeing that, that, you know, actor in person. Yeah. So to like, you know, be that person, you're like that's so cool and weird, <laughs> but like cool at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I guess I can roll into uh, like you're on TV, um, have viral videos um when you're younger and now um like it's pretty cool to have that uh like reach and then bring that um i guess what's the word i don't want to say notoriety but like diver- like people can see like the diversity in the sport because you are able to reach so many people through commercials through your um like black like uh, black like me program um with my hair and stuff like that and see that you know the sport is diverse um and giving like the big thing is like you got to see it to to be a type of thing so like giving younger skaters the ability to see someone that looks like them um and then want to try the sport and feel like there is like inclusiveness to it yeah um and i for me when i was younger i never saw that really yeah you no know, it was it was kind of like oh well you know i never haven't really seen a person of color yet you know, on the TV, I wonder why that is, you know, watching, you know, nationals and all of that when I was younger. And, you know, I was like, it didn't really register until I got a little bit older because I was like, oh, that's weird. But okay. Like, you know, when you're younger, you don't really think that deep into things. Yeah. Um, And, you know, as I got older, I realized it more because I would be in, you know, the locker rooms at competitions and I would be the only, the only colored person there. And, and I was a little bit uncomfortable because I, you know, I, I would get looks here and there and it's, it's not the best feeling, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, well, I'm here for a reason. And, you know, I worked hard to get to where I am. So none of that really matters as long as I, you know, do what I've been practicing and, and do what I love because this is why I still skate because I love it so much. And, and that's what, you know, kept me going. And, and also the support that I get from everybody and, you know, seeing people pack, tag me in post and, and watching their little girl watch me on TV. And it's just like amazing. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, that's so cute. Like, I wish I could just go and hug them. Cause they're like so adorable. But yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. And like, I guess it's cool with social media to have like that access people to be able to, to, uh, to reach out to you and like talk to you and for you to be able to like see, um, Mm -hmm. live, like someone like uh, looking up to you, essentially, like you have a young kid, like looking up to the TV and seeing you perform. Um, like that's pretty cool to have that instant, um, like access to that. Cause like you're saying, you grew up, you didn't have much, uh, as far as like seeing seeing someone that looked like you. Um, so like to have, provide that for somebody else and create that spark uh i think it's pretty 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 cool it's pretty special yeah um so i guess we could try and tie in um so like with my hair i know a lot of your programs you you put a lot of thought into it um with your coach uh derek and then peter um you put a lot of thought into like your songs that you choose like choreography um you want to explain explain or go into detail with that Yes. So programs are very important to me because, you know, skating to something that I connect to just, you know, makes it that much easier to skate to it because I, you know, I can put my own twist on it. I can, you know, you know, create my own story with the music. And if I, if I choose something that doesn't really speak to me or I don't really connect to, it's just kind of a drag skating to it for the whole year because I'm like, oh, like this program isn't the best, but like I'll skate to it. And and it's just, it doesn't, it's, it's just not my favorite thing to do. I just love connecting to the music and really feeling it. And sometimes I actually, you know, get chills through my program when I'm skating to something that I really love because it's just, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is why I love the sport so much. Cause I'm just like, I feel so free and, you know, 
I'm telling my own story through this music. And, you know, lyrics have definitely opened up the door for like a lot of my programs. And, you know, of course, you know, skating to music with no lyrics, it's a little bit harder because you're, you have to really emote or, you know, tap into that character. And with lyrics, it's, you know, you know what they're singing about. So you know what facial expression to have, like, oh, my heart is broken. You have to look like your heart's broken. But if yeah. there's there's none of that, you have to kind of like make up a story and be really convincing because it's hard. It's hard to just, you know, try and stay in character when you don't really know what the yeah. character I mean, well, there's a story, but you have to really tap into it. Yeah. And, you know, my co my coaches and I, we definitely have a process of choosing music. Like I will play something for them and I'll be like, do you like it? They'll be like, yeah. And then they'll play something for me. And then, you know, it's all kind of a joint decision. And then my coach, Derek, he choreographs all my programs for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I like that process. And like, I like what you're saying about like the freedom of it because you get to, it, yeah, it's something that like through you and your coaches, like as a team, like get to build something that um like mean something to you um and that only i feel like enhances uh the performance i'm still fairly new but i can see like when you're skating or like skaters that are really feeling um yeah. their performance and it just like that makes you it does give you like even like as a like an audience member like the shows to see someone like you know hit like a certain uh like point of the song with like that much more emphasis because like they are feeling the emotion that they're trying to convey. Um, so I think that's super awesome. Um, and then going, I guess, Black Like Me went pretty viral. Uh, Michelle Obama mm -hmm. retweeted it or, uh, she, or like she, shared the video. She she tweeted it and she wrote, we see you keep going, keep pushing. And that, I honestly didn't think that was real because my mom texted me and I wasn't really on Twitter at that point. Like I wasn't, yeah. you know, on Twitter I didn't I didn't have it downloaded on my phone or anything so I wasn't in a loop for Twitter or anything and then she texted me a screenshot and I was like is that real because if it's not real <laughs> that would be really me mom yeah. and so you know it was real and I was like you're kidding and and that program Black Like Me was after um you know everything shut down and I got back in the rink and it was like a couple months after I got back in the rink and uh, Mickey Guyton sang that song and she is so amazing she that song I my coach played it I'm like where did you find this because like I've never heard of Mickey Guyton before she has a beautiful voice you know I'm just like where did you find this because I look for music all the time and I cannot find anything but this program this music I have to skate to so my coach and I we we did some we did some choreography and you know it was for um a competition the Peggy Fleming trophy and after that, I, I actually made it my show program. So I, I kept the program and from, you know, that program still has holds a very special place in my heart. It's just such a great program every time, you know, I turn the music on, or I hear it, you know, it brings a smile to my face because I, I relate to the music so much. And in that, you know, just skating that program, it, it's another moment to where I'm just having so much fun where I can't help but smile throughout the program. Yeah, well, it definitely shows like Marshall, you can see the like natural like happiness. It's not like a forced uh, yeah. like presentation. It's like you're you're feeling it. Um, that is, did you, you was that Jordan from On yeah. Ice Perspectives? Yeah, so I, talented. I, 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 oh, yeah, I he's, don't know how he does it, but he is amazing with the camera, and and I can't even skate without the camera. Sometimes I don't know how he does it with the camera. Yeah, I, I've been on ice uh, with my camera and doing stuff and like, I can't imagine following someone during their program and keeping everything in focus. It's, his stuff is, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's done it a few times with different skaters around and I see them. I'm always excited to see the stuff because it's very it's good. It's yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have much more to say. Than, yeah, it's great. Um, you sang for one of your, uh, songs right you you did the singing yes well my I, the first time I sang my program was 2018 I sang half of my long program which was Whitney Houston and man that song is not easy to sing Whitney Houston she got 
vocals, she can sing. Yeah. And so I love the second half of it was one moment in time. Okay. Um, I love the second half of that song to her because I was like, girl, you got to take the second half because I cannot do that. Yeah. It's the first half, the easy part. <laughs> And you know that's the first time I ever sang, and I was I was nervous for people to hear it because of it's it you know I'm singing yeah. so I'm like oh gosh like I don't know but like it sounds good but like I don't you know I'm just nervous yeah. so like and I actually did forget when the music turned on because I was so used to my old you know her singing the whole song and this was the first time I heard it in an arena and it actually I was I was like oh. Oh wait, that's me. And I was, you know, going in my program. And I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that I was singing the music. And it was really, it was awesome to hear that in an arena because, like, just the acoustics and everything is just like you're kind of surrounded by it. It's yeah. definitely different than listening to it in your car. So, like, skating to my singing, it's there's it's kind of encouraging because I'm like, you know, okay. I can hear myself singing. I know what I'm singing about because, you know, Whitney, she's singing about, you know, something that she related to when writing the song. But when I'm singing it, I'm like, okay, this is my one moment. And, you know, in this, my first year senior skating in a, you know, an arena with all of these amazing competitors, you know, and, you know, I just did what I did in practice and I skated a really good clean long program and got my highest score I've ever gotten. And, you know, from, that that was just amazing because I was like I have to sing my program one more time like I I don't know when but like that was amazing and so last year or last season I decided to skate to At Last by Etta James and my coach was like I really want you to sing this song this year and he played it for me and I'm like yes I'll sing it this year I'll sing this this is like an amazing song to sing you know even though she's singing about loving a person, which, you know, or, you know, finding her, her special person at last, um, I haven't experienced that type of love. So I was singing the song for my love of skating and, you know, being in the studio is awesome. Like it's, I could see myself doing that after skating. It was just, you know, I love being in the studio. It's really fun. And, you know, skating to myself it's it's still such an amazing amazing experience like I love I you know hearing it still because I'm doing a show March 5th so I'm still doing my short program um just still hearing it I'm like why wow, I I can't believe that that's me actually singing it's still so cool that's yeah, super awesome um I guess we could transition a little bit um I know you said like didn't have much uh as far as like direct role models of someone that looks like you um, when you're growing up. Uh, did you ever do any like research or start to look into uh, different skaters of color that um, I guess have kind of paved the way? I know I did some research yesterday um, in a, in my say, Surya uh, Bonnelly. Bonnelly, yes. Yes. Um, she's, uh, I mean, just with my little bit of uh, knowledge of skating, great skater, um, the backflip, I know not, legal in uh competition but still i guess sent shockwaves around uh yeah. the world especially at the i think it was a pretty big competition that she uh did it in um did you end up looking into that more like once you got older or um yeah and also ty babylonia she actually um helped me a lot she she taught me how to bow because i didn't know how to bow and i We'll never forget this. We were standing. I'm not, I don't remember where we were, but we were in a public um, area and she was teaching me how to bow because I didn't really know how to bow. And from there on, I, I bowed the same and because she taught me how to bow and I didn't know how to. And that will always stick with me because she was, she, she sort of mentored me through, you know, through my younger skating years. And my, my first coach, Peter Betts, they were, they were, they were pretty close friends and you know she would help me and give me advice and I would go back and tell Peter Betts and it was just it was a really really great dynamic and you know I did see clips of Surya Bonali doing a bat flip and landing on one foot and then doing a triple sow and I always thought that that was amazing you know I've never seen anybody else do that and you know for her to do that even in competition when it was illegal it's just kind of like I don't, I don't know if I could say this, but kind of like a badass move. Like that was yeah. really, I 
which is really cool for doing that, you know. Yeah. She said, do it anyway. And you said, I can't land on two feet. Well, I'll land on one and do a jump after. Yeah, that was, that's awesome. Like, man, to be like, to do that, to have, you know, the courage to do that in competition after they tell you not to is like, she was like, I'm going to do it on one foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a statement for sure. Especially like, I mean, competitions are, are big because you do so much preparation to compete and get to a point and to just kind of say like, you know, uh, forget the rules. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and then may, and then I guess bring more notoriety to the sport because you're just showing the, the athleticism. Yeah. To do the jump and then do, um, a jump after that, like that's, that's That's very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Um, that's cool that you've had a like, mentorship um, growing up. Is there any, um, I guess, what's your feelings as far as like, I guess you being like the new generation of like pioneers and creating that, uh, like opening that door for for younger skaters um, as far as like diversity and, and have you had any experiences where you have younger skaters that look up to you? Um, yes. I there was um this little girl who actually did a project on me for Black History Month and her grandpa grandfather sent me a picture on Instagram and or posted a picture and then you know I, I saw it and I was like oh my gosh this is the cutest thing ever like I'm part of a Black History Month yeah. like that's so cute and she was the cutest thing ever like I was like she's so cute like I I can't believe she did a project on me and you know it I'm really I feel really honored and blessed to, to be where I am to you know have the opportunity to spread awareness and to bring diversity into the sport because there isn't a lot of it and you know I feel like I just opened doors for for younger kids of color and just you know I feel like it's encouraging to see that you know encouraging for me for for me to see little kids want to try um figure skating and tell me on the tv it's just it's it's that's super awesome um I think I believe uh your Belinda Ice um, they have a Black History Month uh, board uh, that they put together, um, and you're on that too. So, uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to check it out, but um, I know they were they wanted to put that together. Um, so yeah, so you're you're on that too. That's uh, it's cool, um, and I know I it it's cool for me to see because um, I play hockey. So it's like I'm very aware that uh, most of the time I'm the only person that looks like me uh, at the rink. Um, but at the same time, it's just for me another opportunity to um, create new expectations for people. Um, you know, when it may be meeting a black person for the first time, or creating that different, uh, yeah, dynamic. Um, yeah, I think uh, we can cut it up there. That was a good, good ending point. Um, I appreciate you coming on the podcast again. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing you at the rink, and good luck. Uh, March 5th for your, for your competition. Thank you. No problem. Welcome back. Uh, thanks again to Star for coming on and taking time out of her day, uh, sharing some stories, giving us uh, some of her insights on the figure skating side. Um, and thanks again to, to Emerson for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're very fortunate that they both called the rinks their home. Um, and with that, that's the end of the podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.